the number one thing that we get asked is, do I really need to hire an experienced SEO company? And I know that seems like a very uh, easy question to answer because you should be able to say, yeah, of course you should hire an experienced SEO company. But commonly, the more experience you have in an SEO company, the more you charge, and then companies have to make hard decisions about, is it worth the investment? So let's go back to the original question. Do I have to hire an experienced SEO company? When I'm talking about how you're gonna transform your market marketing, the number one thing that I'm trying to do is develop qualified traffic to your website. That's the number one thing I'm trying to do. So when I start to think about what goes into understanding how an experienced SEO company is gonna work, is they need to know those critical factors. How do you develop qualified traffic that's gonna convert in, and generate leads and sales? All right, so that's the number one thing that has to happen. But from the experience standpoint, is, is that there's so many companies that are specialists in one area or another, meaning that they're really good at web or they're really good at technical SEO, which I'll explain later, or you know what, they're really good at backlinking. And what happens here is, is that they're not gonna explain to you the critical parts of SEO that are gonna be, that are gonna be used to establish a comprehensive approach of SEO. And so when I'm talking about an experienced SEO person, I need to know that they've had the longevity in, the, in their industry they know their craft to understand how Google algorithm changes work because there's many of them that will affect you and they're not going away. Uh, other things that I'm going to need to know is just that you understand Google Analytics and how do the numbers work so that you can get develop goals and, and KPIs in your marketing to make sure that your SEO is going to work consistently. And then finally, you know what, there's a nuance of SEO that is that comes through experience. You know, like they kind of talk about Thomas Edison says like, well, what was it like to fail a thousand times in, in, in developing the light bulb? He said, you know what, I never failed a thousand times. I just learned 999 ways not to do it. Well, our company is around 20 years old. We've been doing SEO for the large majority of that time. And what we've sort of learned is the reason why we succeed for our clients is we've learned about 999 things not to do. And so the benefits that our clients are receiving from us is the fact that we have so much experience going into our craft and our, into our approach. So what I'd like to do now is sort of walk through some of the critical questions that you need to be asking yourself in relation to you know, hiring an, an experienced SEO. All right, so what does an experienced SEO company do differently? Well, the first thing I'm gonna say is, is that, that an experienced SEO company should have a comprehensive approach. And what I mean by that is, is that I usually like to think about six critical areas that they should focus on. The first one is setup. You gotta make sure that your website is airtight, but that it's also connected to Google in a way so that we have Google Analytics connected, Google Search Console connected, and that we've done a lot of the, the technical parts of SEO that are built onto your website. And what I mean by that is, is that there's things like schema code and there's other things related to robots.txt files. There's all this like nerd level setup that has to be done to make sure that your SEO is firing on all cylinders. And if you don't do these, these steps, these technical SEO steps, in the long run, you're really gonna lose. And I really believe that Google dings you for that. Now, step number two is, is that you gotta clean up. And what I mean by that is, is that you have to go into your website and you have to re-optimize your title tags, your URLs, structure, structure your content effectively so that Google can understand it. Um, I like to be in a scenario here, even though that Google is the super brain or the super mind, I like to make sure that our approach Make, doesn't make Google think because the more we have to stretch Google, the less likely they are going to be to index or rank your content, All right? Then the next portion of this is I'm going to say, you got to set goals. And so when I talk with my clients, we have to figure out how many sessions or how many visits have to come to your website and how does it compare to your goals? How many leads do you have to generate from your, your traffic and how does it compare to your goals? And then what is your conversion ratio? so that I can figure out an entire ROI model based upon how I develop SEO for qualified traffic. All right, other things in this, in this um, process are you gotta develop a content strategy. This is number four. A content strategy, the number one thing you wanna do is you wanna develop an editorial calendar so that you can go from being a, a reactive marketing company to a proactive marketing company that consistently puts out more and more content and establishes you as a thought leader. Those are going to generate backlinks, which are going to be essential to your ranking. And that next 
thing that I'm talking about, number five, is backlinking. Essentially, backlinking is trying to identify high authority websites that are gonna find your website, find the value in your website, and then are gonna link from those high value websites back to your website. Number six is I need to know, are you serving a local clientele? Because if you are, I'm gonna to have to make adjustments to your website for local SEO. Are you serving more of an organic or national market or even international market? I need to know that. And then I also need to know how video is gonna play in and content's gonna play in. So when I'm thinking about SEO, I'm thinking about local SEO, organic SEO, video SEO, mobile SEO, and content-based SEO. And then finally, analytics. When I'm talking about analytics, I'm not talking about just basic Google Analytics. I need to be able to know the critical things that are happening on your website that deal with conversion. I need to know what keywords are ranking. Um, I need to know which keywords are on page five and they're gonna basically start to work their way up to page one. There's critical things from an analytical perspective that you're always turning the dial to figure out what's working and what's not. We're always A-B testing. We develop content. If it sticks, we start to re-optimize that content to make it better and better. If it doesn't stick, we have to go back to the drawing board and figure out why it's not working. We have to figure out what keywords are on page three or page two, and what do we got to do to get them to page one? The next question is, what type of SEO, um, what type of SEO approaches have the most importance or the most impact? So the number one thing that I try to do after I've done the technical SEO is I try to establish a very strong content calendar or an editorial calendar. In order to generate backlinks, which are going to be the critical part of SEO, you have to establish yourself as a thought leader. You have to create content on your website that we call pillar content or best in class content or skyscraper content. They're all the same thing, but essentially means if I'm going to talk about one particular topic, I want the content on my page to be the best on the whole internet. So I'm going to, I might spend 1200 words, 2400 words, even 10,000 words, whatever it takes to outshine the competition. Okay. Other things that are gonna impact your SEO is um, the consistency of, of communicating, right? It's very hard for Google to establish you as a thought leader if you are just kind of like a one-hit wonder. So the things that we try to do is we try to teach our clients to consistently communicate and consistently promote their content. Because if you're able to go from being reactive to proactive, you're establishing yourself as a thought leader and you consistently communicate to subscribers um, you know, whether that's in, on your website or in YouTube, you will generate a lot of quality traffic. The next question is how often do you check your SEO results? That's a great question. Uh, it can, and it can drive you nuts. And we've worked with clients that literally want to check it on a daily basis. And they have no idea that Google is literally turning the dials on a, you know, on a daily basis, a minute by minute basis. So do not over check your results, but also don't just set it and forget it. And so what I mean by that is, is that we, as a practice, we do a quarterly deep dive report, really nerdy stuff. It's going to show you what's working in your plan, what has to be changed, how is content affecting it, how is backlinking affecting it, what keywords are getting on the first page of Google, and ultimately, what kind of quality traffic are we bring to your website. The next thing I want to be able to look at is your monthly report. It's scaled down. It's more, more or less just the facts. It's going to show the progress of the campaign and what other parts of your campaign are going to be in your editorial calendar. And then finally, we provide real-time access through HubSpot so the clients know how many sessions they have compared to their goals, how many leads they have compared to their goals, and how many clients that they convert compared to your goals. So the, the final question is, how do I know if my current SEO provider is up to snuff? Are they doing all they can? Are they actually even qualified? Are they experienced? So that's a really great question. But the number one thing is ROI. You do got to give them at least 90 days to try to figure out some of the stuff. But what I need to know is, did they clearly set out your goals so that you know what ROI actually is? Because if it's just keywords ranking on the first page of Google, that might not bring you conversion. So what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to worry about the quality of traffic, the quantity of traffic, and did it actually convert? So you might say, well, how do you know if it converts? Well, what we do is, is we put goal tracking code on thank you pages. So if someone's going to sign up for a first time appointment, I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a goal on the thank you page. The only way they would have gotten to the thank you page is if they actually converted. You can do the same thing with products. You can do the same thing with initial consultations. You can do the same thing if, if maybe one of your KPIs is to get more newsletter subscribers. All of those things have value, but what I need to be able to do is I need to measure those goals that are on thank you pages. 
So if you have a provider and they're not doing these critical parts of the SEO you know, approach that I've been mentioning here, please reach out to us. We'd love to just kind of give you a real simple audit. This is, a, uh, this is designed to be non, um, like designed to be easy for you to understand, but it's not a confrontational thing where I'm looking at your SEO provider and say, you gotta switch. What I'm trying to do is just give you an honest assessment of where you're at and will this work long-term.